So it's just 7.30. So while we're kind of waiting for some people to come in, um, I'll let you guys know about some interesting stuff we have coming up at the Dharma Collective um, that may be of interest to people who are here. So this Saturday and every uh, third Saturday, we have a Q Sangha. And that's a practice and discussion meetup for people who self-identify as LGBTQIA+, or questioning. Um, so if that describes you, or if you have a friend who fits that description, who'd like to learn more about meditation, um, this is a really good way to do that. Uh, and this Saturday we're in for a treat because the visiting teacher is Cyrus Smith, who's amazing. Um, so if you've been kind of thinking about going and you haven't been sure, you've been thinking about telling a, a friend and you haven't been sure, this would be a really good Saturday to go. And that one meets on its own link to kind of preserve the um, you know, container of the community. So follow the link uh, to find it um, because it won't be on this usual um, SF Dharma Collective link. And another uh, thing coming up this weekend um, that should be of interest is Andrea Vecchioni, who leads a sit every Monday through Thursday morning, just for a half hour. So that's a really nice way to kind of get your morning practice in and go on with your day. And then once a month on a Sunday, she does a longer, like a two hour um, workshop. And that's this Sunday. It's called the Dharma of Intimacy. And each month she picks a different theme. So last month, the theme was compassion. This month, I don't know what the theme is, so it's a surprise. Um, but it's a way to kind of be in community in a practice context. So that's coming up on Sunday. And um, before we get started, the last thing I will say is that as most of you know, the San Francisco Dharma Collective is run uh, entirely by volunteers and entirely by students. Uh, and we never charge admission for meditation events. And we don't do that because we think that the Dharma is for everyone and should be accessible to everyone. Um, because we never charge admission, we rely on Dana to sustain the Sangha, sustain the teachers, sustain our practice. And so if you're in a position to be able to offer Dana in a way that you can give freely and joyfully, please do. Um, and the request is to really make that a practice, a practice of giving, a practice of sustaining the Sangha. And Donna, when, when kind of practice with your full attention and when the gift is given freely is it's literally a liberation practice. So if you're in a position to do that, uh, there are some links in the chat and if not, if it would put a strain on your finances at all, um, don't worry about it and keep coming and keep practicing with us because we want to be a place where everyone can come to practice. And particularly tonight, uh, we're in for a treat. Uh, this one was worth staying up late for. Uh, Chandra, I'm really glad you're here and <laughs> welcome. Thank you, Katie. It's always great to have you here. Thanks for coming, even though it's late on the East Coast. So how many people are here for the first time? Just curious, Tiffany. Hi, you guys. Yeah, I thought I saw some new faces. Welcome. These are classes are ongoing. Everybody's welcome to drop in as you are able to come. So I'm glad uh, to see some new faces. Maybe there are more who aren't showing on the video. Of course, it's nice to see you. Sometimes it's nice to see you at the beginning. If you can, just pop on your video to say hi. That actually is... <laughs> Like a personal request, <laughs> not like a not like a mandatory request. It's some as a teacher, it's nice to see you. Yeah, and you might not know that the teacher likes to see see y'all. Hi, <laughs> good, thanks, peace. Uh, and you don't have to keep on your video the whole time. Just the first couple minutes is is sweet from my perspective, and uh, and then you can turn it off and do what you need to do. Hi. So welcome, and every once in a while we get to engage in a very cool practice. I've been thinking about this all day, very much looking forward to it, called Feeding Your Demons, which might sound a little strange. Why would we want to feed our demons? What is that all about? 
but actually it's about really meeting and dialoguing with aspects of ourselves like it's kind of like what people call the shadow work right so we we get to go in and meet a little nagging voice or a little back pain or a little you know um old pattern that keeps looping back around how many people have old patterns that seem to keep looping back around we all do <laughs> most of us do i think even the buddha said i have patterns that loop back around but it's the way i relate to them that's different now right non-attachment not clinging not identifying onto them so if if even the buddha has that then you know maybe we don't need to beat ourselves up about that same old thing that's been there for so long and what feeding your demons does is it helps us befriend those things and actually benefit from them in the sense of liberating that in inherent energy knot that's kind of coagulated up in that whether it's trauma or assumptions or thinking uh, patterns that we learned as a child there's energy in those blockages in those so-called demons and when that is addressed and met and with love with compassion at least with some space and patience in in a in a format like this there are other therapeutic methods meditative methods as well but in feeding your demons we get to meet them dialogue with them and learn from them liberate that energy and meet what's called the ally so we meet the demon and the ally in this five-step practice called feeding your demons it's a guided practice. You don't have to overthink or know anything. Brand new people are welcome to dive in tonight. I'm sure a lot of people are brand new to this practice. Other people I know have done it a lot before. And I have benefited so much from this practice. You know, I was a meditator for many years and never really learned how to work with my shadow. And this is one very important aspect of that work, especially as a contemplative person, as somebody who likes to meditate, uh, I find the Feeding Your Demons is really cool because it's a five-step practice. The first four steps are similar to some dialogue therapies or empty chair therapy where you dialogue with a fragmented aspect of yourself. You see it, you feel it, you ask it some questions, then you get to switch positions and become it, <laughs> speak as that. Uh, perspective whether it's the demon or the ally but then in the fifth step what what makes this practice different from therapy is that we rest in awareness we rest in contemplative open meditative space and just rest we don't do we don't fix there's nothing to work on we just rest and enjoy the after effect of the practice and that can, that resting in the fifth step can be a minute, three minutes, five minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, three hours. You know, if you, if you hit your stride in samadhi, you could stay there for a few days. <laughs> but, you know, even just one to three minutes of resting and letting things just be, especially after kind of doing your little housekeeping with the Feeding Your Demons, the prior four steps, I have found, and other people report this as well, that there's a feeling of simply arriving in meditation. You're just, you slide in like a smooth home run, you know, slide into home base, you're there. And it's a wonderful preparatory practice for meditation, actually. So the whole process takes about 30, 40 minutes, depending on, you know, the how fast or slow you go. And I will guide this whole practice tonight. But tonight is special. Tonight is special. It's something we've never done. It's something I've never done online before. I've done it a lot in person where we integrate art. <laughs> now, you don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be anything that you're not. But what's really cool is at two junctures in this five-step practice, after you see the, the, the demon, and then later, after you see or feel the ally, I will ask you to pause and just sketch. It's just kind of like free flow. Just, just, you know, even if it's just with a pencil or a pen and a random piece of paper from your printer, 
Or if you've got crayons or colored pencils or pens, you can go ahead and and get those. Why don't we pause because I'm bringing it up right now. So what I want is that everyone gets something to draw on, some random piece of paper. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. could be your journal. could be some printer paper. Maybe you already have an art book. Uh, And then also get a pencil or pen, minimum. That's all you need. If you've got other supplies, like... um, like I said, any kind of colorful stuff that you might have to play with. You could even do watercolor if you've got your art set, set up right away. Some people are artists and they've got it there ready ready to go. So no big deal, though. The main thing is don't worry. I'm not, I'm not putting pressure on you. I want you to play. I want this to be fun. And you'll see how it integrates with the practice as I guide you. <clears throat> Often at the end of this practice, we spend time journaling, and we, we'll do that too. And what I like to do when I've drawn is journal around the drawings. So, you know, sometimes we've people have art books where they do some journaling and then they do some sketching or doodles. Tonight we can kind of do that as well. And then you have a record of, oh, the fuzzy little teddy bear or the, <laughs> or the goblin or the angel or the... Um, dragon, you know, whoever you met on this journey, you'll have a little sketch, uh, something to remind you. But please keep in mind, this is not about representing what you see or feel perfectly. In fact, I can guarantee you right now, unless you're a really highly trained professional artist, there's no chance that's going to (laughs) happen. The main point is to actually let the art creation, let the drawing or painting or, you know, you can even use clay. I know people aren't ready for that, but sometimes we we take clay and we make the clay with the eyes closed into the shape of the demon. And then later we morph that very piece of clay into the ally. That's super cool. But tonight we're just keeping it simple. I want you to approach this art piece as an extension of the feeding your demons practice where yes maybe maybe i have a butterfly come as my ally so i i use i make the patterns maybe what the wings looked like the size the colors as best as i can you know sort of similar to what i felt and saw in my imagination but then i let the very act of art making continue the evolution of the healing that's happening around these energies that have come to speak to us, to to be integrated within us. And so it's not about the finished product. It's not about how it looks. It's how it feels as you're drawing. Yeah? So it's like you're loosening that channel from the hand, or the, the imagination to the hand, and letting the, uh, the, the healing continue. I think you'll know what I mean when we do it. But uh, it's not about the outcome. It's about the process. So does everybody have something to draw on and to draw with? Yeah? You excited? You scared? (laughs) Are you like, what did I, why am I here? I could get out now. (laughs) I'd say just stay, you know, feel it. What else are you going to do? We're all stuck inside. (laughs) What's fun about the feeding your demons process is that we get to journey. You know, even though we're not allowed to go on the airplane, we have the interplane ride of, of this wonderful arc of practice called feeding your demons. It's developed by my teacher named Lama Tsultra Malioni. It's based on a uh, Tibetan Buddhist practice called Chud, which is very deep and uh, a blend of shamanic practices with Buddhist philosophy, with Buddhist practices. So Lama Tsultra took that and the kind of the core gestalt of that and then paired it with the empty chair gestalt type dialogue therapeutic method. So it's a really cool blend of traditional tantric Buddhism with um, with some modern techniques. So let's see how, how you enjoy it. Um, any comments or questions before we dive in? I'd like to dive in soon so that we can experience it and um, and then have time for questions at the end. So I don't want you to overthink it, right? 
at the beginning. But of course, oh boy, Marina says good, good. Anyone else? Anything kind of just maybe I forgot to give some nut, nuts and bolts that are required. I see Eli's on the call. Eli's done this a lot. Uh, Eli, have I covered everything, do you think, in terms of... Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Two seats. Awesome. I knew there was something. So what you'll need is an empty seat in front of you. Okay? So if you're on a cushion, maybe you put a blanket or another cushion in front of you because you're going to be switching seats uh, when it's time to become the demon and then time to become the ally. So take a moment to arrange your space. If you're in a chair, maybe you can get another chair and put it facing you, just a couple, like a foot or two in front of you so you don't have to travel far. You want it to be close because your eyes will be closed when you switch. Yeah. So empty seat, empty chair, cushion, or if you don't have enough space to do that, Another option is to just, when I tell you to switch positions, is to simply stand up and then face your original seat. So you'll be standing instead of sitting in the second position. Good. Thanks, Eli. All right. So if you're brand new to the Feeding Your Demons, what I like to say in the beginning, it's really up to you what you work with, but really what's nice to work with is what's really up for you right now it could be something kind of just tender and mild it could be anything big um, if it's something that is really intense that you tend to work with only with a therapist I'd say maybe don't do that tonight you know do that do so if you're new to the practice do something that's a little bit you know medium range <laughs> medium to low range but I don't want to control you you know my teacher says she doesn't she says it doesn't matter because it's actually amazing. The things that we most resist persist within us. So even taking something that's quite quite strong within us can have a very cathartic, the healing can be equally as strong. But I also want to give you permission to, to go mild if you at the end of the long day. Um, I also ask that you stay Really, I really do ask that, that you stay through the full arc of the practice. Sometimes emotions will come up. Sometimes it's very mild, and that's not the case. But if you get a wave of tears or something moving through you, please stay with the process, stay with my voice, and keep breathing, keep breathing, coming home to the breath, and letting the wave crash you know, through you, within you. And what you'll find is that when you stay and you see the full arc of the practice till it's to its end, there's a resolution. There's a quality of, okay, I thought I was, I, I might not make it through that or I needed to leave or jump ship, but I'm really glad I stayed because you learn something through that and there's a feeling of completeness and uh, uh, resolution. Okay. So, let's go ahead and start to turn inward. Allow your eyes to close. Make sure that seat in front of you is empty. You don't want to put anything on it because you'll be sitting on that seat. Your art supplies, your paper, everything is off to the side of you. Within arm's reach, but not on the empty seat in front of you. And then once you're settled, close the eyes and start to breathe. Releasing tension with the out breath. And we start with nine relaxation breaths. With the first few breaths, breathe into any physical tension you may be holding in your body. And then release that tension with the out breath. Noticing any tension in the face, the jaw, the shoulders, the belly. Releasing with the out breath. Now 
And then with the next few breaths, breathe into any emotional tension you're holding. Notice where you're holding emotional tension in your body. Breathing into it and then release it with the out breath. Feel it melting down into the earth beneath you. And then with the next few breaths, breathe into any mental tension or worries you're holding in your body. And notice where you feel them in the body. Breathing into that and then releasing with the out breath. Feel thoughts, worries, concerns, mental tension melting down into the earth beneath you. And then take a moment to generate a heartfelt intention for this session together, your motivation. And now take some time to just feel into what you'd like to work with tonight. I'll give you a couple minutes here, so really just let the dust settle. It can be emotional, mental, physical. What's blocking your experience of freedom? Maybe you have an art demon, a creative block or a judgment. A critic or a self-doubt. Maybe there's a chronic uh, pain or illness you're working with. You can certainly Work with that sensation in the body as the starting point. You don't have to know what it is or the story around it. Or maybe it's a relational dynamic with somebody in your life. And if you're working with that, it's very important to, to know that it's not that person out there who's the demon. It's the reaction to them. Maybe there's jealousy or anger. So we work with that feeling of jealousy or anger as the block, as the so-called demon, not the object out there. Because we're doing our work. We're taking responsibility for our emotional well-being. Be honest with yourself. What's been hiding? What's been sad? What's been lonely? What's been denied or ignored? There may be a few things in there, and what I recommend is that you work with what's most up. What's the most raw or tender for you right now?
And when you've decided what it is you'd like to work with tonight, then feel where is it living most strongly in your body? Where do you feel it in your body? And what is the shape of this feeling? And what is its color? And what is its texture? And what is its temperature? Is it hot or cold, warm, neutral? Really feeling this in your body, if the mind is trying to figure it out or think it, drop down into the body. Let this be a somatic experience, this first step of feeling it in your body. And now take a moment to intensify the feeling for a moment, maybe remembering when you felt it last most strongly. And now allow this sensation, color, texture, Allow this feeling to move out of your body and become personified in front of you as a being with limbs, a face, eyes, and so on. You can even make a gesture with your hands to help move it out of the body. Notice what you see. It's okay if it's not clear. It might be a feeling or a cloud appearing. Don't worry, it'll come into focus as we move through the process. If an inanimate object appears, imagine what it would look like if it were personified as some kind of animate being, because we're going to dialogue with it. And notice, what is its size? What 
What is its color? What is the surface of its body like? The texture of its skin or fur or feathers, scales? What is the surface of the body like? What is its density? Is it really dense or is it more like light or energy? What is its density? Does it have a gender? And what is its character? What is its emotional state? And what is the look in its eyes? And now notice something about this so-called demon that you didn't see before. What else do you see? Maybe you notice its environment. And now when you're ready, here's where we pause, open our eyes, and start to draw, sketch, paint, whatever you feel like doing. Just put that pen or pencil to paper and just move the hand. Don't overthink it. Just let this process continue to move through you. I'll do this for about five minutes.
You can add texture, shapes, the environment, if you sense the environment. You can also jot notes around it, give it a name. The demon of fill in the blank. Or just keep drawing, we have another two minutes. Okay, so now let's kind of wind that down. And now, as you finish your last pieces, if you're wanting to just do a couple more things, if you're already done, what you can do is go ahead and put your picture that you just drew on the empty seat in front of you, and then close your eyes. So the drawing of the so-called demons on this empty cushion or seat in front of you or the floor in front of you. And then close your eyes. So it's facing up, just sitting on the seat. And close your eyes again and bring this image back into your mind's eye like you originally had. Notice the shape, the size, the texture, the density character, all of that. Notice the steam in front of you. And when you feel connected to this energy, this demon again, you're going to ask it three questions. Not waiting for the answer because you will switch positions in a moment, and become the demon and answer as the demon, okay? 
So now just repeating after me, one by one. What do you want? What do you really need? This is the deeper need beneath the want. And then how will you feel when you get what you really need? And then when you're ready, keeping your eyes closed as much as possible, switch positions, take the picture and put it on your lap facing outward. So switch positions, take the seat of the demon, holding the picture in your lap facing your original seat. And take a moment to settle into the demon's body. And feel what it's like to be the demon. So yes, you're holding the picture, but you're actually becoming the demon. Take a gesture, an expression that helps you embody the energy of the demon. Very important to switch positions. It helps with the process. Noticing how it feels to be the demon. Are you tense? Are you hot? Are you spacious and big? Are you tiny? Are you crunched up? Or are you expanded and open? And then notice how your normal self looks from the demon's point of view. See your original, your normal self in your mind's eye. In front of you, from the demon's perspective, how do you look? But you are the demon. And now answering these questions, speaking as the demon, really like an acting exercise, be the demon. And answering the questions. I'll, re- I'll say the beginning, you can re- repeat the beginning and then complete in a full sentence out loud. What I want is. What I want is. What I really need is, so what is that deeper need beneath the want? What I really need is. When I get what I really need, I will feel. When I get what I really need, I will feel. What is that feeling that the demon would have when its deepest need was met? When I get what I really need, I will feel. Fill in the blank. And 
Really landing on a feeling tone. If the answer is more cerebral, like I'll feel like I'm in a field of flowers, then ask, then say, when I'm in a field of flowers, I will feel. What is the feeling? Because we're going to use that feeling in the next step. Good, so taking note of the feeling. And then you're going to switch back to your original seat. You can put that drawing back on the demon seat, facing up, and come back to your original seat, facing the demon. Keeping the eyes closed. And take a moment to settle back into your own body. Sense and feel, see the demon in your mind's eye again in front of you. Also knowing that the drawing's there, but most important is the the imagery within the subconscious bubbling up. And now feel, imagine that you either dissolve your body into nectar or that you create an infinite supply of nectar. And this nectar has the quality of the feeling the demon would have when it gets what it really needs, that third answer. So it's like flavored with that feeling of maybe freedom or love whatever was the answer, and fuse the nectar with that feeling and then feed it to the demon, an unlimited supply of nectar flowing from you to the demon, feeding it to complete satisfaction. Notice the color of the nectar. And notice how the demon takes it in. And notice what happens to the demon as it receives and takes in the nectar. Does it shape shift, change, morph? Feeding the demon to complete satisfaction.
If the demon seems insatiable, I invite you to imagine what it would look like if it were completely satisfied. What would it look like if it were completely satisfied? And then notice now if there's a being present after the demon is completely satisfied. Did it dissolve completely? Did it shapeshift into another form? If there is a being present in place of the demon, ask this being if it is the ally. If no being is present, then invite an ally to appear. If that remaining being is not the ally, then invite an ally to appear. The ally is a benevolent figure, force, feeling. It's not ambivalent. So really invite your ally to appear before you now. And notice what you see. What is its size? color. Notice the surface of its body. Its density. Does it have a gender? And what is its character like? It's emotional state. And 
the look in its eyes. Now notice something about the ally you didn't see before. And now we pause and draw the ally. You can stay in that liminal place, but just gently open the eyes, grab your paper. You can turn it over and use the same paper if you only have one piece. Draw the ally or get a new piece of paper and just let that pencil or pen touch the paper and just not stop. Just move it. Let your arm be loose, the hand loose. It's almost like a shadow of the outline. You can sketch loosely and then start to fill it in more and really let your process continue to unfold as you draw. We'll draw for five minutes.
about 30 more seconds. And then we'll start to come back. And just like before, when you're ready, put the ally drawing on the empty seat in front of you. And then allow your eyes to close again and like reconjure up the ally in your mind's eye. Notice its character, the look in its eyes, colors, shape, size. Really feel connected with this ally in front of you. And when you really feel connected with the energy of the ally, ask the following questions, repeating after me one by one. How will you help me? How will you protect me? What pledge do you make to me? How can I gain access to you? Now immediately changing seats and becoming the ally, again taking the picture, putting it on your lap, facing the original seat. And take a moment to settle into the ally's body. Maybe the ally was standing, you could stand. Or seated, take a posture, uh, an expression that helps you embody the energy of the ally now. And notice how it feels to be in the ally's body. And notice how your normal self feels from the ally's point of view. And when you're ready, answering those questions, speaking as the ally, I'll say the beginning and you can repeat the beginning and then finish the sentence, speaking as the ally. I will help you by...
I will protect you by I pledge I will, speaking as the ally, I pledge I will. And you can access me by, you can access me by. And when you're ready, slowly change back to your original seat, taking that drawing, putting it face up on the empty ally seat, and then take your original position. And allow yourself time to settle back into your own body. And see, sense, feel the ally in front of you again. And look into its eyes and feel the energy of the ally pouring into your body. The energy of the ally flows into your body and spreads all the way down to the soles of your feet, to your fingertips, throughout your whole body. And imagine that the ally dissolves into a, like a blissful, radiant light. Noticing the color of the light. And feel this light dissolving into you, integrating this luminosity into every cell of your body. And notice this feeling of the integrated energy of the ally in your body. And now for the final step of resting in awareness. Rest in the state that is present after the dissolution. Just rest in open, spacious wakefulness. Just rest. Rest for a couple minutes here, just letting everything go now. Nothing to do. Letting yourself arrive 
in this natural state. And now let's slowly come back, feeling your breath, texture of the clothes on your skin. And recalling the feeling of the integrated energy of the ally in your body. Allowing the eyes to open slowly without losing that feeling and connection. And we can take a moment to just internally dedicate any positive energy that came from this journey for the benefit of all beings everywhere, as vast as the sky. Thank you, thank you, thank you.